This Happy Model Mobula 8 may be a tiny drone that weighs only 80 grams, but it's essentially a flying HD digital camera that gets you crystal clear 4K footage with exceptionally smooth and reliable flying characteristics. And I think it's fueled the recent resurgence of the CineWoop, which as far as I'm concerned, is a really good thing. Especially as this only costs around $100. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. About four or five years ago, Cine Whoops were the big thing and they came in all shapes and sizes. But to get good quality HD footage, you needed to mount a GoPro on it. Or more often to keep the weight down, something like this, a naked GoPro. And as we all know now, naked GoPros, although they're very light, can be a bit temperamental and they've got no display to give you any idea of what's going on. But with the advent of the DJI O3 Air unit, lightweight cine whoops are rapidly making a comeback. With the latest O3 firmware that gives you log format and with suitable ND filters, the O3 camera gives stunning 4K footage that's pretty comparable with the latest GoPro at a fraction of the weight. Now, I really loved my old Mobula 7, and back in the day, I flew it a lot. And I really wanted to get the Mobula 8, but I've deliberately waited until Happy Model finished their frame design based on user feedback and testing before I got hold of one for review. So this is the light version that's available with the top frame to suit either HD0, walk snail, or in this case, the DJI O3 Air unit. Now you can buy a more expensive one with a VTX ready fitted, but this light version is about $100, or around 80 pounds in the UK, and is ready to take your own O3 Air unit. Now all the versions have this same bottom frame with everything ready fitted except the VTX. And the flight control in here is the Crazy F4 HD that's got a built-in Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver running version three of ELRS. And it's got a built-in 12 amp four in one ESC, eight megs of black box memory, and it's even got a BMP 280 barometer. And the motors, these are EX1103 11,000 kV paired with these Gemfan Hurricane 2023 props and this is the same that they fit to their well-proven analog version of this Mobula 8. Fitting the VTX is easy but you do need to be careful as you fit the unit. This is a bit of a tight squeeze in here and you have to bend the frame to get the camera antennas in. There's not a lot of room but this injection molded frame is pretty strong but do take care and don't force things. These simple weight saving whip antennas are included in the box, but there's no reason you couldn't use the original O3 antenna if you want. And once it's all fitted, you just need to plug the included connector that's down under here into the air unit and fit the top frame with four screws and nuts. And I do recommend you add a drop of thread lock on top of the four nuts to stop them coming out. Now, until I fly this, I don't know if there's going to be any jello in the video, but fitting soft mounts between the top and the bottom frame might be an option if there is. Then you just need to mount the O3 camera with a couple of bolts on the side here. But one thing I've noticed, you can't get a lot of up tilt on the camera because it interferes with this thick portion of the top frame there, but I don't see this as a problem for regular cine whoop flying. There's lots of ways to bind this with your transmitter, but the easiest way is using the ELRS bind phrase and Wi-Fi. My transmitter's already set up with my bind phrase, so I just turn the mobular rate on and wait for the LED to start its fast flash after a minute, and that means it's in Wi-Fi hotspot mode. Make sure Express LRS Configurator is installed on your computer and connect to the hotspot that's called Express LRS RX. The default password is Express LRS. Wait for the home page to appear or just browse to it. 
enter your bind phrase, hit reboot, and you're all done. Let's have a quick look at how they've set up Betaflight. Okay, so let's connect and see what we've got. It's all connected and working. Ports, um, we've got UART1 set up for MSP. So that's the OSD in your Goggles 2 or Goggles V2, whichever you're using. UART2 is set up for Serial RX and that's the ELRS receiver. Configuration all looks pretty standard. Arm angle set to 180, which is useful. That means you can arm upside down. Power and battery, that looks to be defaults. Fail safe is set to drop. PID tuning, here we go. This is the interesting stuff. They've clearly been doing quite a lot of work on this. That's uh, PID profile one. And if we've got anything else, well, they've done something there as well. That looks fairly tame. Hit profile three, that's defaults. And it looks like they've only got one rate profile. Yep. So that all looks fairly normal apart from the PIDs, which they've obviously done quite a lot of work on. And we're running Betaflight 4.3.2, the target's FPV Betaflight F4. So it's almost I think it's one release behind. So it's been quite a lot of stuff going on there. Be interesting to see how it flies. Now, if you find that the receiver tab isn't working in Betaflight Configurator, but you know that the quad's bound because the receiver LED is solid and on, there is a fix. So if you go to your transmitter and run the ELRS script, you press sys, scroll across, to scripts and go down to tools, scripts, sorry, down to tools, and you find the ELRS Lua script. Press, hold, and say execute. Now, all you need to do is scroll down to model match, click, turn it on. Click to set it, click to turn it, to set it again, turn it off. So you basically toggled model match. And then if you recycle the transmitter and recycle your quad, it will all start working again. Now I don't know why this happens, particularly on the single board flight controllers with a built-in ELRS receiver. And I don't know why this hack fixes it, but it does. Now I've been flying this with these GMB 450 mAh 2S LiPos which just fit nicely into the battery holder on the bottom of the frame. And I've been getting about four minutes flight time if I take it easy. If you do push it really hard with lots of punch outs, you'll maybe get two to three minutes. This does fly extremely well and Happy Model have done a great job on the tune. Plus, it's very quiet, which is unusual for a whoop or anything that's got ducts or prop guards. It does suffer from the usual Cine Whoop Your washout, but I don't really have a problem with that. 
If you want to do those fast descending turns, use a proper five inch quad. Cine whoops aren't really designed for that type of maneuver and you can never expect them to perform acro particularly well. I've never really understood why people spend ages trying to tune it out. It's never gonna behave the same as a good five inch quad. So in my mind, don't bother. But what Cine Whoops do exceptionally well is slow cinematic flying. And this Mobular 8 is excellent at that. It's very smooth and predictable and you'll get beautiful 4K footage. And if you angle the camera very low, you'll just get the ducks in shot. So make sure that you check that before you take off or you'll have to crop them out in post. There is a very, very small amount of video jello on this. It disappears if you use ND filters on the O3 camera, but I think I'm gonna experiment with some soft mounting of the top frame. And if you process the footage with gyro flow, the results from this are excellent. So good in fact, that I took this on my last commercial video shoot for a holiday home and the results are better than I got with the Shendrone Squirt that I normally use. Plus it has the massive advantage of being small and quiet, so it doesn't freak people out when you fly close to them. And more importantly, if something does go wrong, this is so light, it's not gonna hurt anyone or damage anything. Now this top frame seems to be quite sturdy compared to the original 3D printed ones that came with early versions of this. And over the last week of use, it stood up to all sorts of things, but I will keep you posted. This really is an exceptional Whoop style drone and it only costs about $100. In fact, I think I'm gonna buy a second one as a backup. Your comments are always appreciated and I do try to answer them all. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.